G'day, Clayton here. Just spoke with Dr. Carla. She's recently involved in the finance industry. Got some pretty cool insights around uh, females in, and uh, about mothers in particular. And we talk about sort of the financial planning strategies on how to uh, sort of help people and families start thinking about these type of things earlier uh, than they normally would. And to address this problem, uh, she's created this app. It's called Longevity. And we go into how it feels like can help women in general. Um, so hopefully uh, you enjoy. This episode is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Launching nearly 20 years ago, this ASX-listed company is ranked number one for overall platform functionality and user satisfaction by investment trends for the past three years. As the financial advice landscape changes, it's important now more than ever to embrace new technology and enhance the way you do business. With this change comes your chance to innovate, explore new perspectives, and realize new efficiencies. NetWealth is here to support you on this journey by providing you market-leading technology, excellent customer support, and expertise to help you innovate in your business. Visit the NetWealth website to learn more and get the PDS which clients should read before making a decision. Products issued by NetWealth Investments Limited. So you, you're, you've brought to market a longevity app. Mm-hmm. Tell me, you know, so how did you go from the agency there to, there. to here? Yeah, another Correct. big, another giant leap. Yeah. Well, I think the, that being at um, the agency helped me, um, I guess it brought to my attention the issues around financial security or financial insecurity in retirement and that it was particularly an issue for women. Well, ha- ha- the women retire with half of what men do. Yeah, around about yep. half, um, twice as likely to live in poverty uh, yeah. in old age God. as men. God. And this is actually one of the most ones that really hits me hard because I hear a lot of um, stories about this statistic, uh, which is that the fastest growing group of homeless people in Australia are women over 50. So, and I hear some horrible what? stories because people come up and, and you know talk no. to me. Yeah, you know, women are living in their cars, uh, getting in, and getting up and going to work, um, or Stop having it. yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a real crisis um, in Australia. In, yes, in Australia. Yeah, um, and I through through my knowledge of those kinds of issues, uh, I ended up with a very well, um, a very thorough understanding of the retirement system the superannuation system, how it works, how it doesn't work. Yeah. Um, and that and that sort of uh, probably made me um, with a fairly high level of financial literacy than I otherwise would have had I not been in that role because, like, you know, you know I don't come from a finance yeah, background. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah. But that's what sort of got me started thinking about this. And um, when I was, uh, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, four or five years ago, I was doing my MBA. Hmm. And the last subject, um, which was 2016, I finished my MBA, they put you in a room with uh, a corporate partner who has a real-world problem that they're currently trying to fix. And they uh, they said, the, the problem we're trying to solve is people aren't preparing for retirement. Go fix it. And it could be anything. It could have been a policy uh, proposal. It could have been an ad campaign. It could have been anything. It didn't have to be tech or an app. But I was like, ah, this is my jam because I know that this is a gendered issue. Yes. And I know a lot about this problem. Yes. And I wasn't solving it for women and I'm still not solving it just for women. Longevity app is not just for women. Clearly, Um, yes. But I knew that I could crack this or I may have a good good crack at it. Uh, And so long story short, the end of that three, four-week process, we ended up with what was the first prototype of longevity. And it had such amazing resonance with the people that we tested it with, with the company that we that we proposed it to. We still have really good relationships with them um, that we decided to go forth and set it up as a business. And I was on maternity leave at the time had, with my second boy. Good on you. And I'm like, I've got some free time. Good like, on oh, you. <laughs> I'm nuts? so stoked. I love those stories. And uh, so I, I, you know, sort of took on the lead. Yeah. Um, got us some initial funding. And then last year, my co-founder and I just really sort of um, committed to it. And I, you know, worked full time on it, developed the tech. The, the app's now built. It's not up on the app store yet. Right. It's on test flight. Um, right. So it's like it's up. It's it's pretty much ready to go. Um, so those like fear, I keep having people come up to me and they're like going, I can't find it. They've got their phone out. They're like, I can't <laughs> find it on the app. So I'm like, no, it's not there yet. <laughs> Sorry. Right. But it's coming soon. Yes. Um, yeah. And so that's sort of how I, I went from um, 
gender equality into uh, tech and fintech. Yeah. That's and, the thread. And and talk about what it is, like how, how, how you... Yeah, the yeah. actual product. That, yeah. That's a very probably relevant thing to do. Yes. So um, Longevity App is solving that retirement gap through micro in- transactions. So allowing you to automatically top up your superannuation account, your existing super account. We don't make you switch or we're not setting up our own fund. Hats off to those who do. Uh, but we, uh, we we allow you to automatically top up your super whenever you spend. And so it could be going to Coles um, and spending 100 bucks on your weekly groceries and then having $1 or 1%. We work on a percentage as opposed to a roundup automatically go into your super and with the wonders of compounding which we all know and love you can make a significant difference at the end of your working life by you know not having to make a financial sacrifice or a lifestyle sacrifice because that's something that came through very clearly in our testing very early on um that if if people in their you know 20s and 30s 40s when you're actually need to start thinking about these things if it meant that they had to sacrifice you know a house deposit um, or a holiday or, you know, all those sorts of things, that they're not going to do it. So we had to find a solution which would mean they could make a meaningful difference without having to make um, some kind of immediate lifestyle or financial sacrifice. Yeah. So that's what longevity enables people to do. It's a funny thing, this whole um, super gap, because part of me thinks, well, you know, a big part of me thinks it shouldn't be about um, us having to you know, split our super or women having to top up more of their own after-tax dollars into their super to catch up. Um, There's a fundamental flaw in the system, uh, if that's the case. Um, But in the meanwhile, that's going to take generations worth and decades worth of um, changes to uh, to our, you know, our society, to the way we work, to the policy that underpins and the legislation and the frameworks, that's not going to happen anytime soon. It's so not in something the that longevity can solve tomorrow. No. In the meanwhile, <laughs> we can solve the super gap. Absolutely. You know, and we can start looking at things like um, the way we save for retirement and, and spousal contributions and yeah. splitting and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I think it's also important to not lose sight of the fact that there's something fundamentally broken that under, underpins all of that and that's what we need to keep addressing as well. Who do you think is in a position to help solve that? Do you, do you, do you think that is a, is that a, a, a legislative thing? Is that a, uh, is that, uh, you know, is that a media mm. thing? Is that a, mm. is that a financial planner thing? <laughs> you know, who, who's in a position to be able to handle this? I think uh, there, are, there are touch points for everyone. Sure. So, yes, it's definitely a legislative thing. Um, if you think about the, the, the way that we work at the moment um, between men and women, sort of like, okay, let's pretend we're going on a road trip, all right? Mm-hmm. Hop in your car. <laughs> hop in your car. Um, for, if you're a guy, you hop in the car, turn it on, um, pull out your driveway, get onto the freeway, you go, go, go of your working life. You get to retirement age. You pull back. You pull off the freeway. Get in your, you know. You hop into your driveway and you're yes, done. Yes. Yes. Women, you hop in your car. Mm. Pull out and you know mm. get onto the highway, yeah. the freeway. Yeah. On there for a couple of years. Yes. Hop, go down. Yep, yep. Pull off and you're going down into this big valley. We call it Nappy Valley. Mm. Do that for five years, maybe even a yeah. decade. You get back onto the freeway, but you're yes. in the slow lane. Yes, of course. You know, you get yes. the picture. It's yes. a very, very different journey for women. Yes. Yet it's on the same rails. Yes. Everyone's on the same system yep. and it ain't working. So there's absolutely yep. a legislative aspect to that. Yes. But, um, and I know I'm sort of almost harping on about it a bit, the other the other, other side of it is you can't just, you know, write a policy and expect that that's going to change everything. I am interested to think about what what can be done from a, from a financial planning mm. point of view. So um, if... So, so spouse splitting is a big thing for me. I, I, I think that's that's an easy no-brainer. Um, I think one of the one of the advantages that we're starting to see today from remote working is there is a um, there's an online recruitment agency that that has uh, experienced women who, for whatever reason, couldn't make longevity mm. like some. Mm. 
But of course, they probably couldn't beat their ex boss in a marathon as well. <laughs> so we can't put everyone at that standard color. Oh, Jesus. shucks. <laughs> <laughs> but th- there's th- there are now um, recruitment agencies with women who are at home with their children mm. who uh, can be hired on an hourly basis. Yeah. yeah. And that kind of thing, yeah. I, I mean, I definitely, I have, I definitely have a, a soft spot just because of uh, growing up with the with the single mum mm. who was working, and so mum would mum would actually take me to work sometimes when I was a kid yeah. and. And, um, and seeing, seeing, you know, in, it didn't really make it like it, it was nothing when I was a kid, but then in hindsight, I was like, oh, wow, you know, mm. mum, mum must have been, you know, just powering on through mm-hmm. it. But, but it's definitely a difficulty that that's largely, um, it's largely biological because of the fact that the woman gives birth mm. and then there's probably, I don't know, I haven't had a child yet, a certain amount of time where it's best for the mum to look after the yeah. kid. But I have no doubt that my wife will be whipping me to stay at home mm. as soon as mm. humanly possible mm. to give her a chance to get back into it. Mm. Um, and and one of the things um, is working from home, I think, is a, is a huge mm. advantage. Yeah. And... Um, and yeah, that's mm. just pa- a part of the a part of the many ways that I think women, uh, especially mums, um, can help th- help out their own future mm. is is trying to stay in that workforce mm. by mm. going to places like this. In fact, I'm I'm looking at hiring a marketing person from that environment as we speak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I think um, flexible working and those kinds of things are really important. I think it's also fundamentally important that we start having that approach for men and women. Um, so because not only does flexible working help free up um, your time for, for women, but if it can free up the time for men, then they can also then take on more of that caring responsibilities and do, you know, more of the, the school pickups and all that stuff, which means that your the female counterpart can, you know, stay back at stay back in the office or go to that function that she needs to after work to, yeah. to you know, get her career pr- progressed to the same, at the same rate as men's do. Yeah. Um, so that, that kind of... Um, change in the way we work has to be applied to both genders for it to really be effective. Yeah. Um, and, and I think from that planning perspective, you know, how can we actually uh, tackle this issue from a financial planning perspective? Yeah. Um, it might be, a, you know, I think it's something about getting that engagement piece much earlier on in life because you can then do do small things, you know, like what longevity is trying to do um, by putting those small contributions in frequently but early and letting the compounding do that work. So you're not having to make big financial decisions around, you know, paying down debt mm. versus paying, you know, putting money into super. You're only putting small amounts in. But if you do it a lot and you do it over a long time frame, you can actually do all of those other things that you need to do from a financial perspective. Yeah, definitely. Like what are your thoughts around getting those contributions in earlier or do you think you should actually Oh, no, be- no. I mean, you've nailed it. I, I'm pretty sure I sat down and did the calculations once and the contributions from 20 to 30 equal the contributions from 30 to, I can't like, remember what like it is perpetuity. now. Yeah, <laughs> like, almost, yeah, yeah, almost. There's an in- insane advantage yeah. to putting money in from 20 to 30. Yeah. I, I think off the top of my head, look, I can I'm, I might be wrong, but from 30 to 60 potentially, mm, like, mm, there's mm. an insanely high advantage to getting that. It's much harder to catch up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I think that's that's kind of the real uh, the takeaway. It's that the, if you can do anything from a financial advisory perspective, it's how do we get yeah. that engagement, which we've all been trying to do for a long time. the problem before it becomes a problem. Yeah. So if you're if you're a twenty year old out there, um, you know if you're a twenty year old female, you might not even want kids now, but you m- you probably will when you're thirty. Yeah. If you start now. Yeah. By the time you get to thirty, it's yeah. going to be far less of a problem. Yeah. And and maintain those contributions uh, of that or that financial strategy um, throughout your life. And 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 I think financial planners can um, have an amazing role in helping um, women and men plan for their different life events. So, what are you going to do financially when you are on maternity leave? How are you going? And just thinking, just even thinking about that yeah. can actually help you. Um, 
keep that financial trajectory that you need to maintain instead of just burying your head in the sand and, and forgetting about it and then waking up, you know, when you're 60 and thinking, oh, like, shit. Yeah. Uh, you know, again, Vera, she says to me the other day, you know, by the time that I have kids, I'll have enough money saved up to last me till I go back to work again. I'm like, mm. oh, I'm sure I can probably help as well. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but she's already all over it. Yeah. It cracks me up. Good on her. I oh, know. She's a killer. She's such a killer. Um, so when does longevity hit? the market soon very very soon mm-hmm. uh we're just we've we've done our ios build so that's for iphones um the android version is also virtually done wow uh and we've got uh, just a couple of other things that we kind of want to get across the line um and um, i am very determined and you know what happens to me when i get determined <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'm very determined that we will launch in the new year hell yeah um can we can we just check out yeah. your homepage for a second? Which is at www.mylongevityapp.com. Yes. Mm. Women control 80% of the purchasing decisions yet end up with half of the retirement of savings as men. Mm. Yeah, that's uh that's uh, so so it's certainly a, a female focused fintech. Yeah, yeah, yes and no. So at the moment I'm actually like AB testing my website. Mm-hmm. So I've I've been playing around with the different sorts of messaging to see what actually gets um, gets the traction so that we kind of can that will sort of help to inform our launch campaign and that kind of stuff. So the website isn't always so female focused. Right. It's just um it's very in fitting um, with in keeping rather with the sort of conversations we've been having today. Um, but it's not always like that. But we do actually have um, I think sixty five percent of the people who have registered for early access when we launch uh, women. Awesome. And I think, um, let me think off the top of my head, I think over 60% as well are in the age range of 30s and 40s. 25% are under 30. So there's actually a really large slice of younger people, like true millennials, mm. who who are interested in the product. So this, this kind of um, assumption that uh, younger people don't care about super, I think... There is some truth to that. They've got other priorities in life, but it's certainly not entirely the case. And I think the the success that we've seen of some of these younger millennial-focused super funds uh, in this space, you know, the the spaceships and the the Zoopers of the world and grow, et cetera, actually um, debunk that myth. It's Mm. it's not necessarily that um, younger people don't care about their superannuation. I think it's more that they don't have the products, tools and services that they actually want to engage with. Do you see any pivots on your horizons? Um, Well, I'm not sure. Not at this point in time. Mm. I think we're pretty clear about what our true north is. Awesome. I think what we will see is... uh, additional product features coming in and that's always been part of our product roadmap and our business roadmap but it what came through very clearly for us when we first started putting together our first prototypes is that um, the the proposition of what the app does needs to be very simple so if we start incorporating things like you know short-term savings and save for a car or save for you know whatever it might be a holiday was confusing and adding in other insurance products or, you know, rewards programs at that point in time, the yes. users were like, well, are you a car app? Yeah. You know, so we had to make it incredibly simple. We do one thing and then you can, once people have gotten their head around that, yes, you can start introducing other features and other services and offerings. And um, so from an advisor's point of view, you would see this getting used as a tool for, say, uh, the the older children of clients, for example. Yeah, that's right. Um, and the good thing about us is, is, is we're not a super fund. Yep. Um, we're not a bank. So we are very agnostic in that way and very genuinely independent. Mm. So um, we support existing into any um, top ups into any existing fund. And it's so it's a very easy, accessible thing for people to use. Is You know how there's open banking? Mm. Is there open super? Mm-mm. No. Not at the moment. Okay. Yeah. 
Well, that, that, that yeah. ruins that idea then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, it'll be interesting to see how it evolves. I mean, at, at the moment, open banking, I think, is really um, – it'll be interesting to see w- – uh, when does that actually come into play? Like July next year or something? I think yeah. technically the banks have to start yes. getting on board with that. What that actually does in in relation to super, I'm not sure. But yeah, it would be interesting. Yeah, it be it would be interesting if if not only would you be able to deposit into um, other super funds, but even help them make investment decisions without having to swap as well. Mm. That would be mm. potentially very interesting. Mm. Very interesting. Mm. Anyway, um, it's been phenomenal to have you on here. Um, I, I, it, it's always interests me when I see people who come from different backgrounds that that join the finance industry. Yeah. I think there's always a really good sort of fresh eyes approach. I to don't things. see a lot of that. Do you see much of the newbies coming in? Because most people I know have got a financial background who then go yeah, to do something else. N- no, I don't see a lot of it. I just I always go back to LearnVest and and uh, the pers- the the um, I can't remember the, her name, but she started LearnVest and ended up selling it for you know like half a billion dollars oh. over in the US. And she came Love from it. psychology, and I always think um, sometimes people in finance are so financially focused that sometimes we miss the forest mm. for the trees. And so I'm mm. always really interested to have these type of conversations to see uh, what other people that aren't from finance are talking about mm. that are focusing on. Um, I'm really interested to see if if uh, it, it remains a, a, a f- an initial female-focused mm. product. Mm. I, um, the, the, uh, we interviewed someone not long ago uh, her name's Sky, and she started Spender. Oh, I love Sky. Yes, she's a legend. And yeah. and and though she'd sort of started with the idea of uh, females and crypto, mm. um, she said that the majority of her clients are still men. Mm. And so it's yeah. one of those things. Yeah. I think Eve, Eve, but I love all the push because I don't think guys care too much. I think yeah. we'll do. I, I I don't think it's a massive thing. Um, to stop men, but it's a really good thing to get the attention of women. Yeah. So it's and for us, this is more of um, you know, with with a launch campaign, for instance, you will have various messaging that will be specifically for for your segments, and mm. one of our segments are women. So mm. there'll be messaging for that. There'll be much um, more uh, gender neutral marketing and websites and if you look at the app itself it's not pink you know you it's it's not in any way targeted Your son would hate it it's then. not no, they, can't, they couldn't give a crap about blue it's actually blue ish um the app Don't like it mum <laughs> yeah, yes um it's it's absolutely not at all something which is meant just for women mm. I, I wouldn't I would hate to cut out 50% of my <laughs> potential target market, but given that it has the ability to make the biggest difference to women, it's a very important part of who we are targeting. Um, I, I've got I've got no doubt that any push in the direction of women is great for the industry as a mm. whole. Um, even financial advice, it's becoming there's definitely better there's definitely arguments to say that women make the best financial planners um is it? We, yeah definitely because oh. yeah 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 because um financial planning is very much associated around uh, interconnected you know yeah. one person creating a relationship yeah. with another yeah. talking about their life purpose Asking and dreams questions and, and, and yeah absolutely and then then the uh, then the investments sort of taking care of themselves mm, in, mm, the, in the background. Mm. Um, it, it's been a big sort of change in financial advice over the last few years, and, and still going through a massive change. Um, I don't I don't think it'll ever become sort of uh, gendered one way or the other. Mm. I think we'll probably just get it to a point where uh, sort of the way that maybe w- will end up happening is is there'll be. Um, uh, like two types of advisors where it's one is more psychologically based and the other is more mm. analytically based, whether that breaks off into genders, who knows? But um, yeah, look, it's, it's, yeah. It, I think uh, finance is becoming far deeper and richer and focused on th- the outcomes that people want, which is really where financial advice is headed as well. So uh, for you to come in and share your experiences with the direction and the evolution of, of mm. advice and, and finance in general, it's been fantastic. Oh, it's been my pleasure. Thank you so much. And, uh, yeah, really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, I have to come back when we launch Done. and let you know 
how we go. Yes, that's uh, – well, I mean, a lot of people that listen to this podcast are, are younger advisors as well who launch mm. uh, their own businesses. And, mm. and, and, and in our Facebook group, which is pretty, uh, pretty popular – uh, when someone starts a business, it's always a really big thing. Mm. So um, I think whenever someone's launching something, um, sort of any advice that you could share as well is mm. super. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'm sure I'll have a lot of that. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Cheers. It's been a pleasure. Bye. Bye.